and that was Talking Heads, Life During War Time. You're listening to No Borders Radio, and this is Leaving the Farm, as heard every Saturday night, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, simulcasting live on No Borders and These Changing Times, T-I-M-E-Z. Radio at these changing times radio dot ning dot com. Tonight, uh, I'm kind of I was thrown off a little bit ago, so let's see if we can get up to speed here. Um, let's see, uh, lots and lots and lots of news tonight. Uh, from WSFA dot com, healthcare executive charged with soliciting child in Geneva County. Oh, and it's not going to load. Huh. Sorry about that, folks. Geneva County, Alabama, an Atlanta healthcare executive was arrested last week and charged with soliciting a child for sex in Geneva County. Michael Lee Grau, 58, is charged with electronic solicitation of a child. He was arrested Friday in the parking lot of Mom's Kitchen in the town of Hartford. Hartford police say Grau thought he was corresponding with a 14-year-old girl, but it was actually a decoy with the Perverted Justice Foundation. Grau was released Monday from the Geneva County Jail on $200,000 bond. The case will go before a grand jury. If convicted, Grau could face up to 20 years behind bars. Now, there is no more child trafficking in this schematic, maintaining national security from the National Security Act of 1947. And what you're seeing is the fallout on accountability that comes with child predation. The fallout that comes from having maintained this for so long and expecting that they would continue on and on and on and on and on without getting caught. Now the entire purpose of the United States Incorporated Administration is, of course, child trafficking, female trafficking, and the male slave labor market according to their own treaties, their own acts, their own charters, which facilitate banking. From the hcpress.com admin court hearing for local hotel executive charged with involuntary manslaughter continued until June. <clears throat> now this came out on the 21st and um, I've had it on my board for a while and I continually just get behind and, and uh, do other reports but everybody needs to be aware of this one <clears throat> excuse me set for Monday morning the administrative court hearing for Damon Malaterre the hotel executive charged with three counts of involuntary manslaughter has been discontinued has been continued again until June 23rd according to the district attorney's office in January Malatar was charged with those three counts and one count of assault in relation to the three deaths that are linked to carbon monoxide poisoning inside room 225 of the Best Western Hotel in Boone Daryl Jenkins 73 and Shirley Jenkins 72 died in April 2013 while Jeffrey Williams 11 died in June 2013 after spending the night in the same room Jeffrey's mother suffered permanent brain damage according to assistant district attorney Britt Springer who announced the charges at a press conference earlier this year in February Malater entered an initial plea of not guilty and posted a bond of forty thousand dollars FRNs for more information on the hotel deaths you can visit HC press.com now this is something that's very very interesting and when you delve into the treatise on copy holdability and inkeeping this is just business as usual if they need you to be dead if they need you to be fingered as a fall guy it's the inkeeping that's allowing these things when you register anywhere including registering for a hotel room motel and any form of inkeeping you're registering to be a fall guy or a potential death potential criminal statistics whatever else and the upper administration has always maintained this and and now again 
that business is no longer lucrative for those entities that are maintaining under copyhold ability. Those are adhesion contracts and you're up for grabs. And you can read this in the treaty whole, treaties on copyhold, in keeping and such. <clears throat> Excuse me. From Freep.com, retired Detroit pension official charged in child court case. The former top administrator of Detroit's two city employee pension plans was charged today with multiple counts of downloading porno child pornography. Walter Stamper, 70 of Sterling Heights, was ordered held in the Macomb County Jail on $50,000 FRN cash bond during arraignment on 10 counts each of possession of child sexually abusive materials, a four-year felony, and using a computer to commit a crime, a seven-year felony. Now, let me read that again. 10 counts each of possession of child sexually abusive materials, which maintains a sentence of four years on a felony, and using a computer to commit a crime, which is a seven-year felony. Now, of course, these are commercial crimes, use of a child, kidnapping, prostitution. It's all defined under 27 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 72.11, maintaining that if you're doing that kind of thing, you're undercutting the federal government who does that kind of thing on a day-to-day -day basis according to a business model. Now, when you can, can uh, face seven years in prison for a computer crime, which is a financial crime, and four for abuse of a child, there's something wrong with who you're patronizing. There's something wrong with everything about that concept alone. Child predation, child prostitution, a bank, which defined in Black's Law Dictionary says it's a court, charging for the use of bodies, murder, child prostitution, rape, uh, pedophilia, all of these things are commercial crimes. And if you prey on a child, you're undercutting the federal government. If the federal government preys on a child, it's called government. It's also with an act of patriotism. Calling that thing your father as it preys on you and your children, your loved ones, the elderly, it picks off the, the easy pickings, babies and the elderly first, specializing the female, other forms of informants, and maintaining this whole corporate structure to the demise of humankind. Human being is a race. Now, gender is specified, the word, the etymology specifies that gender is also another race or species, a stock option. And all of these fictional creations are created and sold to you. These concepts are sold to you, and they're offered to you as something for you to consume, something for you to buy into or partake of, which... Of course, this comes from the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge only bears fruit called concepts, something created in the mind. This is what the law merchant sells. The concept of child or prostitution, the concept of kidnapping, the concept of racism, the concept of Catholicism, the concept of Judaism, Islamism, Zionism, environmentalism, corporatism, individualism. All of these things are patented products of a corporation. Time is a patented product of the same corporation. Time zone is created under commercial or social aspects of your day-to-day -day living. And then it's sold back to you. And when you go into their original charters, when you go into their treaties, You'll see in these treaties, you'll see in the court orders that you're picked up in the meantime. This just means that you're residing there in the time that they approve or the time that they create. Black's Law Dictionary, of course, has the definition of age. 
Age is a span of time as defined by attorneys. From the PatriotLedger.com, U.S. Attorney charges owners of tele telex free with fraud. Federal agents on Friday arrested one co-owner of accused pyramid scheme telex free and have issued a warrant for the other, authorities said. James Merrill, who was arrested by Homeland Security Investigations agent en route, on Route 9 in Worcester, and Carlos Wenzeler are both charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud for their alleged roles orchestrating the worldwide multi-level marketing operation with its U.S. headquarters in Marlboro. The scope of the alleged fraud is breathtaking, U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz said in a statement Friday, quote, as alleged, as alleged, these defendants devised a scheme which reaped hundreds of millions of dollars from hardworking people around the globe, end quote. The scam was built around charging investors for accounts that allowed them to earn money by posting daily ads for the company. While Telex Free purported to sell a phone service, authorities alleged sales of the product only accounted for less than 1% of the company's total revenue. Investigators say the scheme primarily targeted Brazilian and Dominican Americans. Let me read that again. Investigators say the scheme primarily targeted Brazilian dash and Dominican dash Americans. Some of whom invested tens of thousands of dollars in the company. Many of those investors claim they have essentially lost their money after Telex Free abruptly shut down its multi-level marketing platform in early March and began forcing customers to start selling the phone product to withdraw money from their accounts. Both the Securities and Exchange Commission and Massachusetts Secretary of State filed complaints against Telex Free a month ago, days after the company filed for bankruptcy in Nevada. The SEC also has obtained a court-ordered freeze on the company's assets. This past week, a judge ordered the bankruptcy case moved to Massachusetts. Merrill, 53, of Ashland, and Wensley Ziegler, 45, of Northboro, told attorneys from the State Securities Division in March they got into multi-level marketing together more than a decade ago, according to federal court records. At that time, Wensler, an immigrant from Brazil, had been employed at Merrill's Ashland cleaning business. They started Telex Free in 2012, and the company quickly took off, raising more than 300 million FRNs over the following two years. The SEC has estimated Merrill made an, an initial appearance in U.S. District Court in Worcester Friday afternoon, according to authorities. Wenzler is considered a fugitive. The SEC believes he may have fled to Brazil. Victims of Telex Free can contact the Justice Department at USAMA. Dot victim assistance at usdoj.gov. Scott O'Connell can be reached at 508-626-4449 or s.o'connell at wickedlocal.com. <clears throat> These are crazy days. Now, that's a registered company, of course, and the United States Incorporated is cashing in by seizing its assets after it was, quote, a bad boy. It wasn't a bad boy. That's business as usual up until now. We've been following a case with a Grand Forks attorney uh, from BismarckTribune.com. Grand Forks attorney is cleared of charges. Fargo, North Dakota. The attorney for a North Dakota lawyer, once accused of conspiring to kill a confidential informant, said Friday that officials with the Grand Forks Narcotics Task Force wanted to get even with his client for his zealous defense of drug cases. This is a joke. This is an advertisement for all of them all around. I'll continue reading. A state judge on Friday dismissed a case against Henry Howe, 73, a longtime criminal defense attorney in Grand Forks. Howe originally was charged with murder conspiracy. That was later amended to a charge of tampering with a witness or informant. Howe's lawyer, David Thompson, told the Associated Press that investigators from the task force base their case on lies from a career criminal because they don't like Howe. Thompson said the key witness against Howe, Stephen Anderson, has been charged in 27 criminal cases in North Dakota and Minnesota, including theft, deception, and fleeing from justice. Now, not one of those says that he ever harmed a human being. 
but the force applied with all of those charges turn that man into Judas someone who will deliver somebody else up that's what the game of politics is all about who's got more information on who quote it is clear to me that one of the reasons that the task force was blind and deaf to the obvious reality when it came to Stephen Harold Henderson is because they had a vendetta against Henry Howe Thompson said Henry was an effective force in defending people who were charged with serious crimes Absolutely not. The cognitive judgment says the attorney puts in an appearance and bam, the judgment against you is solidified. Period. The judgment is already there. The gameplay happens after that. I'll continue reading. A spokesman with the Grand Forks Area Narcotics Task Force referred questions to the state's attorney general's office. Deputy Attorney General Tom Trembeth said he had no comment on Thompson, Thompson's claim because we have complete confidence in the task force. The complaint accused Howe and his clients at the time, Paul Lysengen and Wesley Smith, of plotting to kill a potential witness against Lysengen. Investigators say Howe can be heard on a secret recording saying that the case against Lysengen would, quote, collapse like a house of cards, end quote, if the witness disappeared. Walsh County Prosecutor Barbara Welm said in an announcement, Whalen said in an, in an announcement dropping the charge that new evidence came to light regarding a material witness who was a source of, quote, some of the evidence, and quote, implicating how. Her announcement said there are no plans to dismiss witness trampering charges against Lysengen or Smith. Well, wait a second. This attorney is rolling on his client, but the attorney is the one that was gaming the entire thing. Now, to all potential victims of attorneys, if you plan on hiring an attorney, this is what happens when the attorney has heat put upon them, regardless of what you were directed to do. If you do it, that's not their fault. That's your fault. And as you can see here, the attorney gets away with it, but you are going down the chute. Just a little heads up there on uh, as to patronizing these things. They're all psychopaths. From the DailyMail.co.uk, fugitive fire chief wanted for brutal murder of girlfriend met her on an escort site and used the same service to get help fleeing crime scene. Now we've seen this time and time and time again. Uh, Rocco, our very own Rocco, met an agent on adultfriendfinders.com, two of them. The first one took every one of his kids off of him through court process by maintaining false allegations against him. The second one almost killed him out in Colorado when he ran off to uh, meet her. Sarah Douglas, 26, was found strangled and stabbed to death. Oroville Mo Fleming was named as a main suspect after the victim's sister recognized his voice during a terrified call from Douglas. 55-year-old had met Douglas through escort websites two years ago. Statewide manhunt is underway as police warn suspect is armed. Fleming's estranged wife claims Douglas approached her last year to demand that she pay off her husband's escort bill. Yeah, I bet that's true. A California fire chief wanted for the murder of his 26-year-old girlfriend may have used an escort service to help him escape. Orville Mo Fleming has been on the run since Sarah June Douglas was found stabbed and strangled in their Sacramento home on May 1st. The 55-year-old may have used the same escort service he met Miss Douglas through to get help to escape, investigators say. Police believe that Fleming, who had been dating Miss Douglas for two years, had continued to use the escort website after her death. It is, though, that he picked up someone he had met on the site just moments after Miss Douglas was stabbed before fleeing. Quote, we have information that Fleming has most likely reached out to someone in the community of Red Book, Sergeant Lisa Bowman told CBS. Quote, if he can commit such heinous and violent murder in the way that he did, we're concerned for the public. 
end quote. A statewide manhunt is underway to find Fleming, who is suspected of murder, after the victim's sister identified his voice during an argument she heard during a call to Miss Douglas on the night she died. Miss Douglas had confided in her mom and sister that her relationship with Fleming was troubled on the night she was murdered. The former escort called her sister Stephanie just after midnight on May 1st to say that, quote, uh, crying, left the gas on. I think he's trying to kill my birds, end quote. She was then heard saying, quote, whoa, you scared me before a man his sister later identified as Fleming was heard arguing with her, end quote. Stephanie Douglas said she then heard her sister scream before the line went dead. Police believe Miss Douglas had met Fleming through an escort agency she worked at two years ago. Her profile on the site she used to work for listed her rates as $300 an hour and said she would meet clients around the Sacramento and Bakerfield's, Bakersfield areas. The Sacramento will be reported. Fleming's estranged wife, Megan, has claimed that Miss Douglas had demanded that she pay off her husband's debts for her escort services. Now, this is just a crazy story. Miss Fleming told KXTV the young woman had demanded $1,500 and claimed to have a sex tape of her husband. Quote, she said to me and my daughter, if your husband doesn't pay, your husband will go to jail and I have a sex tape with him. End quote, Miss Fleming said. In November, Miss Fleming had a restraining order made against Miss Douglas. The former escort had been living with Fleming in the Sacramento home where her body was discovered on May 1st. Now, it's awful coincidental that the ex-wife has all of this information and the ex-wife has maintained a, re a restraining order against the victim and the ex-wife is an ex-wife and here's a murdered female and now a male on the hook for the murder when what does he have to gain from that? Everybody must use their own discretion and put two and two together themselves and stop relying on the media to provide you with the truth because so often it is not the truth. And this sounds like this man was set up and I'm not uh, justifying any behavior of any psychopath. But we've seen this time and time and time again the same scenario where the ex-wife happens to be the one sitting there when a man blows his own head off and is the only witness as he's quote cleaning his gun or the ex-wife is the one that found there was one in um, New Mexico this last summer uh, where a man was found with his arms and legs bound tightly and his head cut off he was decapitated he was found by his ex-wife and that death was listed as a suicide which of course is absolutely impossible from the first inception of his hands and feet being bound tightly and then the second part that his head was cut off by himself and everybody needs to be aware of, of the ins and outs of psychopathy itself I'm going to pause here and go to break for a second so I can get a drink. Be back. Welcome to Scottish Sovereigns on the land and the home of No Borders Radio. Hi and welcome back to Leaving the Farm right here on No Borders Radio. Dot, no Borders, or, sorry, www.nobordersradio.co.uk as well as These Changing Times at www.thesechangingtimestimez.ning.com. Um, sorry about that, folks. Um, we've got. <laughs> Other news tonight from the DailyMail.co.uk. Um, there's some interesting happenings recently with a bunch of bridge burnings and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but so far, only one of them 
actually evidences what's going on as to what is known as guarantee insurance. Now, last year, when the United States Incorporated was sued by the United States in Ram Adol Libertas, they lost their special drawing rights, first of all, in March, March 8th, meaning they lost their Federal Reserve for preying on humanity. They were evidenced to be preying on humanity, uh, child predation, female predation, basically hunting uh, through what is known as legal process. And by October, November, they had lost their treasury rights or access to the treasury for doing the same thing. <clears throat> now, here in, um, I'll just read the story. For almost a year and a half, workers had been constructing a bridge to cross the main interstate that runs between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. But it took just minutes to bring the entire structure crashing to the ground. The blaze began after a construction worker, his blowtorch, <clears throat> sorry, the blaze began after a construction worker's blowtorch was fanned by strong winds and ignited the wooden scaffolding that was being used to build the new flyover across Interstate 15 in Herperia, California. Driven by high winds, the fire took hold extremely quickly and began burning the supports surrounding the bridge. Debris began to fall, on, fall onto I-15 minutes after the fire began. The road was eventually closed to traffic at 1.30 p.m. yesterday as the $32 million FRN construction project slowly turned into a pile of ash and twisted metal. Now, <clears throat> prior to last year, they could complete these projects. Uh, developers would throw in money maintain a bid on construction, developing, and those bids would be backed by human production, meaning federal reservation or federal reserve rights through each community. Once they lost their funding, we noticed an upspike, an upswing in insurance claims trying to get that money back because that's what they've lived on for, for years and years. The whole system relies on that human productive bid. Uh, productivity. Now that that's gone, you're going to see a lot more of these things. Now the scaffolding um, is uh, treated wood. It does not burn easily. I mean, that's the, the, the whole concept of of an entire bridge being burned out by one simple blowtorch is absolutely, you know, ridiculous on its face. Um, it had to have had some kind of accelerant and and I'm sure there's other experts out there that um, would absolutely agree you know phys <laughs> physics <laughs> as to the physics or anybody with knowledge on you know wood <laughs> or any other um, sorry about that folks uh, let me get back to this I've got Bo with me and um, he'll take the air for just a second. Um. Okay, yeah, hi everybody. Yeah. Um, well, so if um, you look at the information that Tammy has been showing you over the months and we've been putting out on um, the YouTubes, this is really interesting uh, in the terms of guarantee insurance I mean they just ran out of money for that bridge and then all of a sudden it burns down alright use your head people what's going on here bridges don't burn down like that uh, I've got breaking news on the attorney surety front here um, Boulder Colorado Attorney accused of scamming immigrants. 
She promised the path to citizenship, but now she's being called a scammer. A Boulder attorney is facing numerous theft charges for allegedly taking advantage of immigrants. Investigators believe it started back in 2010, and since then, Boulder immigration attorney Emily Elizabeth Cohen, 34, is alleged to have stolen hundreds of thousands of dollars from more than two dozen families. The worst part is they believe there are likely more victims. Victims of attorneys, particularly this one attorney. Mike Gray and his wife paid thousands of dollars to have Cohen represent them, and for that price, they say they got nothing. Sad. We got a lot of empty promises, is what we got from Emily, Gray said. They're not alone. Cohen was arrested in March and was initially charged with seven counts of theft involving seven different families. Boulder County District Attorney Stan Garnett says since her arrest, that number has been growing. I believe around 50 alleged victims we've been hearing from more and more folks, Garnett said. Now, I've heard a lot of these horror stories about people going to attorneys for help, and I've seen some first hand I've seen firsthand that how one would be better off with without an attorney to begin with someone is supposed to be uh, helping and they write up uh, uh, pleadings such as yes I know this is a terrible offense in many other states and they'll list the other states uh, uh, statutes it's like they're building a case for the other side in a lot of instances so uh, once again more evidence right here on the boulder the store just the story just published yesterday on the 9th uh evidencing how attorneys do nothing but prey on human beings absolutely and in california they're upping the ante um Today, earlier, they got a stripper to advertise for the legal industry. And it was very profound to read. Um, I urge everybody to read it. It's from the potsmerc.com, P-O-T-T-S-M-E-R-C.com. Stripper charged with DUI says acting his own lawyer, getting too technical. Okay, the judge kept her there in the courtroom for 90 minutes um, playing his word salad game and confusing her uh, until finally she she decided that she wants a public pretender to represent her and um, it, it was beautiful to see in that you know look they're using strippers now to advertise for the legal industry that that's like the bottom of the barrel folks trying it's it's like um, you know, plastering her naked body all over just to say, well, you know, come on over here to our side, come on over here to our side. And I'm sure that she's, she's, um, you know, innocent. I mean, she's being charged with uh, driving under the influence. She's, she's a child. She's 25 years old. Um, she's quoted as saying, quote, it, it's just getting too technical. Now, this is, and I'll quote from the story, after a 90-minute discussion Friday with Common Pleas Judge Patrick Carmody about the ramifications of defending herself, Monisha Bolden asked the judge to allow her to apply to the Chester County Public Defender's Office to see if she would qualify to have them represent her in court. Now, anybody who's denied their public pretender knows what happens during that time. You need a public pretender. No, I don't. You need somebody to represent you. No, I don't. I need to represent myself. And ultimately, the judge says, okay, psych eval time. Let's get a psych eval in there. And they intimidate, harass, and terrorize those who go into court in the first place and show up at court rather than holding them accountable. And again, this is just more further evidence of the schematic and, and how low they've gotten uh, in order to uh, advertise using um, a stripper or, or any other uh, form of actor or actress. And um, it, it's very interesting to watch. These days are, are, are weird. <clears throat> I've seen that one picture that... Uh, uh, Todd Naylor sent a while back. Um, it's uh, Dorothy and Alice sitting together. Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and Alice from um, Alice in Wonderland. 
sitting together and one of them says I've seen some weird stuff <laughs> and that's about what it is now from the timesunion.com <clears throat> judge pleads guilty to DWI Albany a state supreme court justice arrested on the north way after he drove erratically and refused to take an alcohol breath test pleaded guilty Tuesday to a misdemeanor count of drunken driving prosecutors said Carl Landesino, 47, in Bjorktown Heights, pleaded guilty to the single count during an appearance before Albany Court Judge, Albany County Judge Stephen Herrick, according to Albany County District Attorney David Source. Landesino, a former attorney for the Kings County Democratic Party, oops, was arrested October 17th after state troopers said they noticed him driving erratically on the north way. Landesino told troopers he was on his way home from a judicial conference when he was pulled over. State police said he showed signs of intoxication but refused an alcohol breath test. He was charged with misdemeanor DWI and ticketed for traffic infractions. After his guilty plea, Landesino was sentenced to a one-year condition discharge that requires him to complete a substance abuse program. He was also ordered to pay a $500 fine and have an ignition lock device installed in his vehicle. Now this is a posture for a fall guy because that's where the money is. When you violate conditional discharges or conditional releases or um, suspended sentences, probation, parole, that's an automatic felony. And so it, it ups ante on the gameplay and, and uh, of course, this judge now is in the shoot, which is beautiful to see. It's better than be having a human being in there and um, having them suffer as Job. I'd rather see an attorney suffer as Job than a human being contract with these monsters. <clears throat> I had another story up, but I lost it now. Um, yeah, here it is. Um, from PressTV.ir, 27% of U.S. veterans from Iraq, Afghan wars going hungry, says one study. 27%. More than a quarter of U.S. veterans from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have difficulty getting enough food, almost double the food insecurity rate in the general population, according to new research. Researchers from the University of Minnesota and the Minneapolis Department of Veterans Affairs surveyed 922 U.S. veterans and found that 27% reported not having access to enough food for three meals a day. Now this study is ridiculous on its face, 922 out of how many thousands, and um, we know why they're hungry. Now Bo covered an entire summer this last summer of how much <clears throat> the government hates its citizens, including its veterans. It was raising the Veterans Affairs coffers, it was raising the Defense Department coffers, um, it was cutting hot meals when a, a service member was on duty, on, on, uh, you know, on deployed duty. They were cutting one hot meal a day and rationing them due to quote cutting funding now on the flip side of that they were raising the the veterans coffers they were raising the defense department funds everything else and pocketing all those monies and just absolutely treating veterans and um, deployed officers just out of this world what, what do you say Bo? I mean this is just sick I mean anybody that can patronize this saying is something's wrong with their heads well the whole military game is set up for uh, to feed more fodder into the system okay that these uh, wars as, as uh, the evidence shows are are uh, created uh, maintained and perpetuated by these attorneys okay uh, the attorneys are the ones telling you that there's all these borders and you're different from them and you know you got to be patriotic to your side of the line and and so you gotta you know sign up and uh, uh, you know go kill people at the behest of uh, bankers which are really attorneys and 
and it's not uh, it's not in anybody's best interest except for the attorneys and then what happens to the people that go and uh, sign up to do these things you know they go crazy uh, uh, when they come back they're you know they're basically lost in uh, a, a civilized world they're basically uh, uh, some of them commit suicide many of them come back without arms and legs and uh, you know wh what do you get you get a pat on, on on the head and and you know here's your VA benefits oh well uh, you know we can't really help you there too much either uh, how many people just died waiting uh, uh, for uh, the VA benefits this came out by that one hospital. You get, did you read that one story yet? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Medical care. They're they're on blacklists, and they're dying on purpose. Then they're going to take your gun rights away because oh, you got um, you know uh, some kind of a diagnosis that says you've got uh, post uh, traumatic stress disorder. There you go. And on top of that, when you get your VA benefits, now what we're seeing is that when you come home and you have children born of any marriage prior to the time you were deployed or since they're taking the kids off of you and so even if you get a VA pension that pension is all going to the attorneys as you're buying your children back out of the court system in the perpetual raising that everybody experiences the sickest part is your DD-214 when you come home and you are out of the service you file that DD-214 as a deed a property deed that allows you to be property of this state again and you're witnessing what happens after that your children are taken off of you you go through foreclosures you were never supposed to pay for that home in the first place the soldiers and sailors acts originally promised you I think it was a thousand acres of land and a homestead and none of that is coming to fruition you now have the ability to get VA loans so you have to pay back at less interest than the average citizen when in reality they had promised you so many years ago that you got land you have to pay for the, the um, you know we had a friend growing up that wasn't aware and, and this is when I learned of the um, experience she had joined the military because she was promised her schooling was paid for well she went through and she did her service and then she got out it only pays for the last four years under her program so she had to pay for the first four years the first three years and here it, it's just a raising all the way around it is not anything that anybody needs to be entering into because you you pay hand over fist for everything that they promise you plus some and you get the same raising as any other citizen that you're quote supposedly protecting and, and um, there's nothing there the bottom fell out a long time ago and, and I'm so sorry what you've gone through but now is the time to stand up with everybody and, and push back there is no other option because you're being raised you're being labeled as mentally incompetent you're being put in institutionalized states forced into homelessness um, one in ten military veterans returning are committing suicide the male suicide rate in the United States alone is 35,000 a year you know enough is enough enough is enough stop patronizing this thing it's not what you think it is since the 1947 National Security Act which revamped what the military actually is and the military of course is there to provide for national security state security refers to the human beings a foreign nation is defined under 28 USC uh, subsection 1603 and that is a corporation you are maintaining corporate security by going over to other countries quote countries and killing their citizens and there, there's nothing that you're fighting for you're only fighting to maintain corporate welfare <clears throat> sick we're going to take another break um, because I have to uh, sign in on Rev again we were having some issues earlier I'll be right back folks and we're back sorry for the confusion folks Nighthawk wanted to do some live feed tonight 
We're back with the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio. We're also simulcasting live on No Borders Radio in the UK and These Changing Times Radio. Also in the UK at These Changing Times Radio, T-I-M-E-Z dot Ning dot com. Thank you for joining us. Um, you should be good to go now. Um, <clears throat> we already talked about that one. Let's see. <clears throat> There's more news on Rob Ford today. <laughs> oh, yes. Our good buddy Rob Ford here. Man, are they really just digging on him. Mm. Uh, this story here that came out of the star is just over the top. Uh, man, what do you want to say about it? Oh, it's just neat. They shuffled him off to um, rehab, so he has no idea what's going on. And um, <clears throat> so all this time they've been posturing him and setting him up for the fall, of course, to take out his legs. He's a mayor, so he has a lot of information about the other players in the game. He rubs shoulders with various individuals that are, you know, beyond corrupt, beyond um, where you, <laughs> beyond any imaginable um form of, you know, corporate corruption or politics or anything else. And, and this is how the postures occur uh, when they want to take somebody's feet out from underneath of them. And we've seen this years ago with Larry Craig. Larry Craig had information on the his fellow Senate members. And, of course, if everybody remembers, Larry Craig is the one that was found in the airport restroom wiggling his hand under the door of the or the stall <clears throat> in anticipation of perverted sex and all of these things and what that does is it shuts him up he's not able to now come out against his peers because they already vilified him they already took his knees out from underneath of him just like a lot of these sexual abuse allegations the quickest way to take um, and politically cannibalize somebody and prevent them from rolling on you if you're a corrupt politician or somebody who likes kids is to claim that they like kids and to, of course set them up and, and the CIA and FBI are both beneficial in that but here's your on board off in rehab wherever you know and he's, he's having a hard time he's got all these pressure upon him within the fourth generation warfare schematic uh, he wasn't able to cross the border into the United States the other day and all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> and from the star.com, the headline is Rob Ford. One wild night in March, fresh from Hollywood, two months before rehab, Rob Ford and his felon pals hook up again for drink, drugs, and an astonishing invective. Loaded behind the wheels of, wheel of his Cadillac Escalade, hot high on his Jimmy Kimmel interview, Mayor Rob Ford is winding through the streets of this city. <clears throat> it's two days after Ford's celebrated appearance on Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel Live two months before rehab. In the course of his March of this March 5th night, Ford will bring together two of his closest felon friends beating one and accepting drugs from another go on a racist tirade and boast that he often has sex with quote girls in front of his wife according to an account of the evening he will suggest one man could have sex with her as sources told the star recalling Ford's word the information for this story comes from interviews and from the star's review of audio tape that captures a portion of the evening you notice how all of this is audio taped he's always audio taped and videotaped and Somebody happened to catch him, you know, smoking from a crack pipe, you know, and, and you know. And, and the videos and audios are offered up to the media without any charges. Right. I right. mean, they don't, they're not um, so saying that you got to give me 500 bucks for this or whatever. Right. Like, as is typical with, like, CNN or uh, your major media networks. Or a subpoena. I mean, there's nothing. They just scoot him out over there and, and Rob Ford gets thrown under the bus. Now, if you look at everything and, and rolling on Lisi and all of these other actors, it's just this is political cannibalism at its best. I mean, this is a prime example of what happens when you have too much information if, uh, against your fellow peers. You know, and, and all of these things, 
one of the most profound, you know, we talk about Andy Griffith setting up that there's a good sheriff and, and all of these things. And then Andy Griffith, again, as Matlock, he set up that there's such a thing as a good attorney. Well, these things... When you look at the schematic and what was indoctrinated into entire populaces, do you remember that Dukes of Hazard show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to forget those Daisy Dukes. Right, and uh, Boss Hogg, the mayor, you know, he was absolutely corrupt all the time, and, and the sheriff was corrupt all the time. And, you know, when you put all of that indoctrination together, who's the good guy? Well, the attorneys were selling themselves, and the attorneys and prosecuting attorneys were selling themselves. The FBI was always a good guy. Uh, the sheriff was sometimes good, sometimes bad, and all of these things put into the mind the all of these concepts. Oh, going back to um, you know, fictional tale of the Wild Wild West set circa 1880 with... Uh, James West and Artemis Gordon working for the uh, Secret Service uh, under uh, Ulysses S. S. Grant. Right, and it, it's just profound what what has happened through the Broadcasting Board of Governors and their ability to promote propaganda without people realizing it's propaganda. Because you can go back into you know over on YouTube, they've got uh, propaganda that's you know in your face. And then lesser known is Three's Company. Lesser known is Married with Children. Lesser known is Dukes of Hazards and Matlock. And um, what was the one with Opie in it? Uh, with Sheriff Mayberry. And Mayberry, yeah. And all of these things are part of the indoctrination that you receive through television programming, it's setting the whole system up and making sure that it's all glued together where you're looking one way and you're looking another way. You're never focusing on Congress. You're never focusing on corporate counsel. You're never focusing on the Association of Corporate Counsel or the Board of Governors or Broadcasting Board of Governors or any of these things that are actually manipulating whole societies or entire societies at the same time. But you're focused on, you know, these presentations, which are, that, that's your educational experience. That, that is artificial intelligence. Yeah, and surfing around the net the other night, looking for news stories, being the news hound I am, I, I saw several cities uh, that were pumping their candidates for, uh, you know, city commissioners, uh, um, the uh, city council, uh, they're called different things in different areas, but these are all the corporate council attorneys. Um, of which, you know, one of their board members is going to be the conservator for the county. And all these positions and all these functions that they carry out are diabolical in nature. Why would anybody that knew what the true story is about these creatures be voting for any of that? Right. Let alone voting, period, because you're voting for the... Uh, Basically, the Confederacy to come in and rule over you like uh, King Joffrey. And that was foul. I had another nightmare last night because yesterday, you know, it was brought to my attention that, that uh, Obama <clears throat> had maintained a photograph of himself. Of course, it's photoshopped, and he relates himself to King Joffrey out of the Game of Thrones, which is just, that's absolutely horrifying that he would laugh about and joke about something like that. And I went back through some of the episodes of Game of Thrones, of course, before I, uh, I was finally able to lay down. And it's just, oh, it's horrifying. This little, uh, he's a king. He took over from not his father, but he's, um, you know, his mom was messing around and, and had a child. And this is dated way back when or whatever. And, and um, it's just foul. He, he kills people for fun, he beats people for fun, and for a president, any entity, any psychopathic entity to laugh and joke about having an association with that type of character is absolutely horrifying, but it is notice. Now, through the Huffington Post and all of these other various me uh, media venues, President Obama has stood up there and associated himself with this King Joffrey and 
everybody needs to take notice because he's given you notice and he's telling you what he is he's telling you how he views humanity and he's been telling you this 2009 his platform when he came up for election as the president of the United States Incorporated he was promoting feminism the feminist agenda he came in on a platform of the lead better uh, fair pay act and in his state of the union address he promoted the same thing it never fixed anything they pocketed all of those funds and he stated in the state of the union address that this applies to federal employees female federal employees are paid way less than federal male employees now that has nothing to do with the citizenry it has nothing to do with the mom and pops it has nothing to do with anything other than corporate policy handed down by the federal state now he told you the truth he told you it is the federal state, it is Congress that's raising females while promoting feminism. And now he has told you that he associates with this King Joffrey. Now it's up to you to choose your side. It's up to you, the listener, to use your discretion and realize what is going on and step away from the patriotism. Well, that's right. I mean, unfortunately, the patriots are just the other side of the COINTELPRO. Absolutely. And we see it every day. Every single day. And um, it's just profound. And they're really up in ante now on the patriotism and the agenda. All of these agents are all around. And, you know, I, I have to stop here and say something before we go on with the news and everything else. You know, this week I've been contacted, I don't know how many times, by agents of attorneys that are not apparently under the handlership of the CIA or the FBI. And they're trying to locate me. Now, let me give you the heads up on something. The CIA has my address because we sued the United States Incorporated, including John Brennan. The administration has my address because we sued the United States Incorporated. We have to serve things on these entities. We won the case. And as you can see, they're rolling on you. So trying to locate me really does nothing for you. We already won the case. So even if I'm off, you're still under bankruptcy. You still owe the United States of being all of those monies in gold and it will be still facilitated it doesn't matter what you do to me and you need to realize this because you're wasting your time looking at me as your enemy when it's your peer that's going to take you out because they don't want to go down it's already over though and you need to realize these things because as you you know focus on me what is that doing for you your peers are the ones that cannibalize you. I'm already done with everything that we did. It's already done, over with. The foreclosure is happening now. And the best thing that you can do is step out. If you're innocent, get out of it. If you want a lesser degree of cannibalism, you better roll on your peer first before they get you. And it's usually your handler that's going to take you out as a fall guy. And that's what you can hear about on leaving the farm on the Bull and Rocco show, on the public law. We're here to warn all innocents. In this case, we won. Everybody is held accountable according to their works. That means if you're not a psychopath, you can't be held accountable. And we'll go on. You had shared a story earlier, and I wanted you to take that because you're the one that was covering Google and all of this robotics mess and, and everything else, uh, it's horrifying. Um, but you'd sent me one earlier that, that you know, provides hope that the military is actually maybe turning around and not following a policy as much as they were. Well, this story says they're at least thinking about it now. And to bring up the talking point, the headline reads, U.S. military begins research into moral ethical robots to stave off 
Skynet like apocalypse. Now I have been uh, covering this here and there over the last year about the need to make robots that are hardwired with essentially Asimov's three robotic laws and how they equate to the public law in reality and now so they're giving it some lip service here anyways it's extremetech.com and I'll read some of it the US Department of Defense working with top computer scientists philosophers and roboticists from a number of US universities has finally begun a project that will tackle the tricky topic of moral and ethical robots this multidisciplinary project will first try to pin down exactly what human morality is and then to devise computers algorithms that will imbue autonomous robots with moral competence the ability to choose right from wrong as we steadily move towards a military force that is populated by uh, autonomous robots mules foot soldiers drones it is becoming increasingly important that we give these machines these artificial intelligences the ability to make the right decision yes the US DOD Department of Defense is trying to get out in front of Skynet before it takes over the world mm -hmm. okay so how very sensible so, so they're giving it lip service right. uh, project is being carried out by researchers from Tufts Brown and the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute RPI with funding from the Office of Naval Research ONR like DARPA is wing of the Department of Defense that mainly deals with military research and development while we're not yet at the point where military robots like Big Dog have to decide which injuries and I don't like him using that word injuries because it's uh, another form of uh, the law merchant bringing you into law I should say harm there okay uh, so Big Dog had to decide which injured soldier to carry off the battlefield or where UAVs can launch Hellfire missiles at terrorists without human intervention it's very easy to imagine a future where autonomous robots are given responsibility for making those kinds of moral and ethical decisions in real time in short it's high time that we look at the feasibility of infusing robots or more accurately artificial intelligence with circuits and subroutines that can analyze the situation and pick up the right thing to do just like a human yeah well the human has been broken by trauma shock doctrine force and trauma and we already have those robots working in the military working at social services working at child protective services they're all autonomous robots human beings have been turned into uh, what uh, us in our circles call batteries they've been turned into nothing but monkeys pushing buttons and and this is uh, where you know these types of stories yes we want you know something that's more um, human interacting however how about we work on humanity first and bring that back to where it should be and deprogram the human beings that have been programmed to be nothing but automated monkeys pushing buttons I mean you can see this in the workforce McDonald's has pictures on their cash registers there's no amount of um, thought given to anything anymore and <clears throat> you know it was uh, this fall when uh, McDonald's came out and said that they're going to start hiring people only with bachelor's degrees and I was so I mean that's flabbergasting to imagine that this is where we're going with the um, automated society well obviously they're planning for a depopulated world with the dumbed down populace that will be good product for these attorneys to cash in on and they're going to need less human humans on human beings under their schematic to serve their needs because of these robots and a war is just a part of that now now here's the the positive thing about bringing the world under the public law is that 
these wars and these the civil war being staged between cops and citizens and all this fourth generation warfare all goes away okay because under the public law these people are held accountable for this sort of thing uh, now you know wars like I said again and this can be evidence well enough they're all stirred up uh, you know by uh, by the machine in place under that 1947 National Security Act okay uh, and that was evidenced here is just in another story I read uh, yesterday about an incident that took took place about a month back where uh, uh, CIA and uh, special intelligence officer basically uh, both CIA uh, killed some civilians that were trying to kidnap them there in Ukraine okay you know what are they doing over there in the first place right where are they on the ground and we know from the church committee reports book for um, su supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign military intelligence that they're on the ground promoting the civil war that's occurring there and selling it to the populace that it's the Ukrainians or that it's the Syrians or the um, Arabs or you know the citizens of Afghanistan or Iraq or Iran and that is not the truth the truth is is that the CIA is on the ground promoting civil war and they're doing the same thing here right here on the quote soil of the United States Incorporated and you can see that clearly with the BLM ranch stuff this is all CIA operations they're promoting that civil war they're festering a civil war turning law enforcement against the citizens turning citizens against law enforcement when in reality it's just Congress directing Congress cashing in attorneys filling up their pockets and making them fat to the detriment of all of humanity now you talk a lot about the laws of robotics I can't remember those what were those because I want other people to realize now Asimov he didn't just write fiction or science fiction he wrote books on physics and he's one of my Ch teachers. chemistry right um, many uh, areas of science uh, he was probably the world's most prolific writer ever having published over 440 books of his own having edited and published other works in his Asimov uh, science uh, uh, magazine that was a uh, bi-monthly okay uh, but the three laws of robotic are drilled over and over again through iRobot um, the um, robot novels and the foundation novels and all all which are tied together in his uh, universe that he creates throughout uh, these these you know just um, beautifully written books but um, anyways they are stated as uh, uh, the laws of robotics the three one a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm okay now I'm not sure about I mean actually it could stand the way it is because to injure a human being is actually harm but uh, the, specifically it deals with harm against the human being two a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law now there is a delineation drawn in what we teach between human beings and psychopaths absolutely so again law number two could stand without any revisions three a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law and that wraps the whole thing up absolutely and and he was just so profound I was not introduced to him Isaac Asimov 
prior to you as to the science fiction aspect. I grew up with Isaac Asimov, as I said, as to he wrote so many profound books on physics and one of the, the best ones ever was his introduction to physics which you know for me as you know I, I'm not left brained it, and it just it I, I urge everybody to read that because it, it, it does help when you're not a, of a mathematical mindset to be able to realize and, and you know visualize and encapsulate what physics actually is and it's well removed from you know all of this consensus reality all of these fictions all of these concepts that were fed day to day to day including the action of science and science of course is grasping knowledge but it's not experiencing knowledge as to physics and that's something that you know is the hardest to wrap your mind around when you start down this path and you realize how much of our quote knowledge base is founded on consensus reality and how much is founded on physics you get a kick in the head at some point in time and that's what Revelation explains throughout the book of Revelation in the Bible is that here you are you're going through all of these uh, breaking the seals as things are revealed to you and it turns your world upside down just exactly like Jesus said everything is going to be upside down because it's been taught to us completely backwards. There's no ability for analytical thought in the new uh, public school system. Children are taught to memorize um, using musical theory a lot, musicology, um, and the Delphi technique itself is just so hor horrifyingly um, integrated. It's called the Alinsky method when it's in the public school system or in the educational base. And um, when we get back to reality, which again goes back to the three laws of robotics or physics itself, and you realize what has been going on, then you can move forward and take care of it and hold them accountable for what they've done. Right. So the rest of the story basically is, is uh, the questions that come up are... Uh, handled under the the public law. If we could just skip down to this, the last uh, paragraph in this, at this point it seems all but certain that the U.S. DOD will eventually break Asimov's three laws of robotics. Well, they couldn't under the public law. It would be a self-checking mechanism where people were even creating machines to kill human beings would be held accountable. Absolutely. The first of which is a robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it will open Pandora's box. On the one hand, it's probably a good idea to replace human soldiers with robots, but on the other, the U.S. can field an entirely robotic army. War as a diplomatic tool suddenly becomes a lot more palatable. The, yeah, the, the commencement of this ONR project means that we will very soon have to decide whether it's okay for a robot to take the life of a human and honestly I don't think anyone has the answer well we have the answer right here under the public law okay and there is the delineation between human beings and psychopaths psychopaths have no empathy they have no compassion they have no love of humanity they have no problem with uh, taking human life if it fills their back pocket full of rich attorney cash but so where we're headed now with this depends on whether or not people uh, get up to speed on the consensus reality of knowing who you are as opposed to what the attorneys tell you what they want you to be because if they, what they, if they get what they want, they're going to keep on functioning under private acts and acts of commerce forever to the detriment of humanity forever. And we saw this just re recently, and the video was very, very hard to watch. You can find Bo's report on it on Bono's Entertainment on YouTube. 
But there was a um, an elderly man that was stopped by a law enforcement official, and he got out of his truck in a friendly manner and grabbed for his cane because he had a hard time walking. And the officer immediately shot him. And when the officer, a robot, the officer was a robot when he got out of that car. He's Programmed been, by attorney, uh, attorney uh, policy. Absolutely. He had only been indoctrinated with policy. And so he was having a knee-jerk response, knee-jerk reaction. The second he realized what he had done, it breaks my heart. That video just, I, I, I can't watch it without crying. It's so profound because that officer a robot when he gets out of the car and once he's face to face with that man with a human life having been shot and the man is um, you know evidencing his extreme discomfort and the pain that he's in that that former robot there that was fully indoctrinated with artificial intelligence uh, basically hits his knees and he he starts commenting on what have I done what have I done and to watch that type of reaction is what we're dealing with what we're going into what everybody needs to realize and um, you know help help teach help deprogram these robots that's what our function is we have to deprogram a entire global populace of robots that are artificially engineered this is human behavior modification social engineering they're artificially engineered to be automated to the point where national security is more important than state security which means protection of mankind and we all need to work together now because you know yes we're holding them accountable but how many robots are out there you know you've got military forces now coming home that have been trained in psychopathy they've been trained as monkeys pushing buttons they're behind these buttons for the drones the drones don't have um, they don't just fly by themselves they've got somebody at the other end with a remote control but that somebody at the other end is not seeing a human they're flying a drone and killing whatever is in front of the drone so it looks like it's a uh, uh, what do you call those video games first person video or first person war when it's not a relative viewpoint so you have a mechanism in place that's disallowing human empathy and human compassion that's shutting everything up and we need to put a stop to these things drones should not exist war should not exist every war that has ever been maintained is in accordance with corporate policy yeah and we see the the trouble that is just now starting to uh, occur with these drones in the air we had one run into a one ran into a building a mystery drone as of yet I don't think they even know where it came from but it was I'm guessing probably some sort of uh, DARPA spy uh, type drone that was in st. Louis uh, Illinois and then um, they had a plane almost ran into one, so they're messing with the air traffic. Okay. Now, yeah, these uh, drones are just a product of private acts and acts of commerce. They don't serve humanity, but they instead serve the attorney perpetuating their agenda not for the good of humanity but for the good of the bottom dollar of attorney money in their back pockets that's all it is you gotta choose your side you decide whether you want to help promote the agenda of Congress your transgressors which have evidenced themselves to be nothing but detrimental to humankind or if you want to patronize your own house and adhere to the public law and the public law only okay that's all it comes down to you're either gonna be a subject of those six million codes laws statutes rules and regulations 
Or are you going to adhere to public law and say, okay, I'm not going to do any harm? It's really quite simple, but it's a giant leap, it seems like, for mankind. And it just takes waking up. And earlier, <clears throat> sorry about this, folks. When I first came on the air in the second hour, I forgot to do the promotion for donations for Revolution Radio. We are a listener-supported radio station where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Um, I, I just skipped over that aspect, and I, I do apologize. Um, but you are the reason that we're on the air. Um, just so many things happening uh, lately. It's it's hard to keep up with all of this political cannibalism. We've got presentation after presentation after presentation going on, you know. And and if you are studying from these whatever statutory and legislative law gurus and all of these things, and you have time for that. How about you go read the Congressional Actions, go read the original charters, go read the treaties, and, and realize that treaties are agreements between two banks. And what has been presented in your mind is not relative to the truth. We, we speak about um, Isaac Asimov, for example, and when you look into these concepts, it really is piracy. Um, the action of piracy. Uh, the original charters set up not land masses but channels along waterways and along those channels you pull into a slip, you dock your vessel, everything's under the administrative authority of ports. Everything's under a rental agreement according to Ma Malthusian theory. I urge everybody to read you know Thomas Malthus and you'll find what you're looking for. You know, follow Thomas Malthus through to John Holdren, and which is the science czar right now in the, the um, American administration, and, you know, read his book, Echo Science. And you'll find some very, very horrifying aspects of policy and agenda, and a lot of his quotes are, I mean, it's just, it's mind-blowing on what he has promoted throughout time and again this is written in a book by Thomas Roeder called Psychiatrists the men behind Hitler and part of their um, propaganda part of their promotional um, aspect their advertising campaign happens in the educational system secondary education you're being taught that that human beings are useless bread gobblers that, that children are breathing your air that elderly people are taking up space and they're non-productive. You've been taught all of these concepts so that you can dehumanize each other by which to promote the action of genocide. And once you deprogram and you realize all of these things are just concepts, they, the corporations rely on artificial intelligence being presented to you so that you act as an artificial being, a fiction man, woman, and you're buying your rights from the law merchants for selling you these concepts and then selling you the rights and benefits that come with these concepts. And that's all it is. You have to get out of that mindset and realize humanity is humanity. Life is life. A corporation is a fiction maintained and run by attorneys. And these things are psychopaths. It, 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 this is all stemming from the evolutionary process of life itself. The Cro-Magnon man is missing the frontal lobe. That's what a psychopath is. It's missing the frontal lobe. Neanderthal, Neanderthal is not. Neanderthal is the evolved species of human. And when you go to the foundations of physics of all things and you realize how filthy this thing is, how dirty these these beings are, it, it's absolutely, um, eventually for all of our listeners, it's awe-striking. 
I am in awe every single day as I experience all things that we're experiencing now and the ability to hold them accountable. You know, but prior to this, you know, I was in the same shoes you're wearing right now when you're first being awakened and you're first being made aware and you're first realizing the physical aspects and attributes of these things. You know, I, w I was the same way. I was whining. I was crying. I was trying to get away from it. I mean, there's no escaping the plantation unless you're standing above it and you're holding them accountable. If you're patronizing it, you're still a slave. If you're calling it your father, it's going to give you the rights and benefits that you're asking for by patriotism. And part of that requires that you pay for the services that you're being provided. That includes charging you with things, falsely accusing you of child abuse, child sexual abuse, rape, murder, bank robbery. All these things, that's, that's a mechanism to get you to pay for all of these services. And you can read about this in their acts. The Preservation Act, 16 U.S.C. 7. Read that one. You guys are just animals on a farm. That's it. And you're owned by a master. Until you stop patronizing it and calling it your father. And, and part of that is acting as the fiction. A man and a woman are legal creations. If you're acting as those fictions and, you want, and you're claiming you want your individual rights or your rights and benefits as a female or a male, you're acting as that thing. And by your works and actions, you are known, which is what Jesus said. You're known by your works and actions. If you're behaving like a fiction, yeah, you're going to notice be it doesn't say you're known by what you say, right? And specifically, it, 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 you know, well, of course, uh, the people that buy into that, the, uh, you know, believe the things that these politicians that are constantly campaigning, you, you know, you, if you believe that, uh, you know, if only it were true, you can't look at what they say. You got to look at what they do, and then you see the truth. Absolutely. So, and again, that brings me back to the point that um, I've been trying to reach the people on this week in that uh, these politicians spend most of their time just campaigning and getting you to believe that they're the good guy. It's just like an attorney is like trying to sell you his services. They spend 95% of their time, thereabouts, uh, just convincing you that you need an attorney and that they're the right attorney for you. And that you need them as your father. And one of the most profound uh, documentary records of Jesus' walk is Matthew 23, number 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do you not after their works? For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon this earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And he sums it all up right there, doesn't he? He says that's all they do. They put on these play acts. <clears throat> these scribes and, and Pharisee, the attorneys and the, and the media. They're sitting in the right hand of Moses. They're not sitting at the right hand of God. 
And all they do is put on these acts after act after act after act in their marquee, which is known as a house. The House of Representatives. And when you go all the way back to the Gelnhausen Charter, you'll see what we're talking about. The Gelnhausen Charter says right there that the House of Representatives, any of these houses, these false pretenses, these false prophets, these miraculous workers of inequity that have cups that are so pretty on the outside, but inside they're so filthy, absolutely disgusting, but everything looks so nice. Obama looks great. He can Photoshop anything. Patrick Leahy looks great. But he's written some of the most absolutely horrifying laws, including the Crimes Against Children Act, which is a privacy law protecting pedophiles. And, of course, Joseph Biden, the other attorney, has written an act called the Violence Against Women Act that does nothing to protect females and children and everything to traffic them, according to commercial policy. And that's exactly what Jesus warned us about in Matthew 23. He explained all of these things. He said they're putting on a whole bunch of shows. They're all pretend. It's all a fiction. And in Revelation he says, be pissed. When you realize what they're doing, and you can open that book, that is then that your wrath is made known. It is then that you stand up and you hold them accountable for their works and actions. And this is what it's all about, folks. Revelation. You're seeing them for what they are. They're being revealed to you. And in this, you are to be holding them accountable. 1 Corinthians 6. Don't you know that you're the judge? Stop fornicating with the Lord God. You can only fornicate by giving your body over to somebody to own it. <clears throat> I'm taking a look here at the Newsmax, he Newsmax headlines here with the TalkStreamLive.com feed of what's uh, being uh, listened to right now all over the Internet. And um, and it's all, it's all just, I can see the attorney work product doctrine as clear as day and let's just go through these headlines and we can address them all very quickly under the public law same-sex marriage foes invoke justice kennedy okay all right this is talking about uh, the uh, attorney's interest in those state uh issued licenses why do you have to be licensed to get married if you love each other love each other now, the reason that gay people can't get um, their inheritance is because the attorneys have put their hand in there. Okay, there you go. 14 GOP reps target Senate's failure to act on jobs. Now, if you, you people are still caught in the paradigm, starting to feel that, uh, you know, you're always fighting against uh, what the government wants to do. Well, there's a reason for that. You're at war. They're at war against you. They called you the enemy in the Trading with the Enemies Act, and then later again revised that to the uh, Amendatory Act uh, to uh, bring in uh, everybody. Okay? Congress means with transgression. Okay? So, let's see. Uh, get Benghazi hearings right. Uh, Krauthammer. All right, you know, more just... Uh, delusion of uh, uh, there's some sort of good people in Congress trying to uh, get the get the thing uh, settled about Benghazi. No, they want the controversy to go on and on and on, and for you to 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 uh, basically uh, argue about it too. Uh, Benghazi committee stacked with legal powerhouses. Of course, it's all about the legal. Attorney Work Product Doctrine System. Who should be 2016 GOP presidential nominee? Uh, nobody. Uh, let's see. Four ways to melt body fat fast. Okay. Uh, new diet aid takes country by storm. Doctors say this spices a, a brain 
uh, mental miracle. See, first they took all these things away from you through legal congressional action. You know, and now it's 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 a it's a battle over getting those things back. Uh, and who called you selling naked? them back to you? Who called you naked in the first place? Somebody you know, who said you, you can't have this thing that grows out of the ground. Right. And somebody said that you're naked. Somebody said that something's wrong with you, so that they could sell you the product to fix you. Now, how's that working out for everybody? When attorneys are cashing in on human demise. Teaching you what is beautiful, teaching you what is good, teaching you what is right. When in reality, all of those things are concepts. Yeah, I could break this down in, into into so much nitty gritty uh, over the course of a, an entire uh, radio show. But I mean, the the bottom line is is that it all has to do with. The law merchants coming along and taking things from you, getting you to buy into these concepts so they can sell them back to you. Okay? And it's really quite simple. And I get so sick and tired of hearing these talking heads on the radio. Of course, we know it's rammed down our throat by the BBG Broadcasting Board of Governors. But the talking points are all leading you back down that road to Rome. You know, Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Sean Hannity. Is which congressman is better than the other? Yeah, let's and the answer is, it's all Congress. Let's pick the lesser of two evils again. Let's see if we get up. See if we make it right this time. The definition of insanity is doing something over and over and over again, expecting different results. Doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting different results. Now, you continually pick the lesser of two evils. They're both evil. They're both bad and harmful to you. Stop. Yeah, and this Hegelian dialectic is something that the, the, the media is, is set up for. It's designed to keep you herded back into the the same corral. Uh, we got a, a news story here out of uh, 10news.com. Former San Diego Navy officer sentenced for 40 years in prison for sexually abusing children. Oh boy, here we go. More. A former San Diego Navy officer who sexually abused children while making child pornography has been sentenced to 40 years in federal prison. Brandon Schroth was sentenced Tuesday by a federal judge who said his actions had placed his victims in their own private jail with no release date. All right, we're all kind of in a jail set up by Congress in that sense, though. And, and yes, these Congress critters are all like this. They're just rolling on this individual now at this time because of the agreed entry between uh, Northern Holding Corp uh, Company, uh, Northern Holding Corporation, where we threw the attorneys and fictions in as a surety instead of human beings as they've been using since 1929, since that's unlawful on its face. Duh! Alright? Nobody ever caught this before? I'm not the brightest guy on the planet. Why has there nobody ever picked up on this before? Prosecutors say the former physician's assistant went to Germany in 2010 when he produced child pornography of two girls, ages 9 and 11. He also was charged with taking sexually explicit photos of another 9-year-old at his Mission Valley home. And not only do we have this in uh you know the higher ups like that they're all in the lower minions too uh here's a story out of the times tribune carbondale area school band leader arrested stephen dixon shared too much with his students the 27 year old band teacher at carbondale junior senior high school talked to his students as young as seventh graders about smoking marijuana and engaging in sexual intercourse police said mr dixon Oh. Well, I guess more on that later. Thanks for having me on. Probably cover it on Wednesday on the Bone Rocco Show, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Studio. Bye, everybody. Be well.